going on guys? Welcome to the second video in the series. If you've not seen the first video, I highly recommend you go back and watch that so you're in a loop of what's going on. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to use MetaTrader 4, how to set up a personal demo account, how to enter in a trade, and I'm also gonna go over how to use TradingView. So I like to use it on my phone the best. It's the simplest, easiest way of entering in trades. It's still very good on the computer desktop version, but I just think the phone version is a little simpler, especially if you're just now getting into it. So I'm just gonna open the app right now. Right now I have no accounts attached to my MetaTrader 4. It's a fresh MetaTrader 4, so I can show you how to get yours set up. So I'm gonna go to settings right here. I'm gonna hit trade accounts. And as you can see, there's no trade accounts associated with my MetaTrader 4 right now. So I'm gonna hit the plus button up here. I'm gonna hit open personal demo. Now you can just use MetaQuotes demo, that's MetaTrader 4's built-in demo server. Um, right now the markets for most, for most currencies are closed, so I'm gonna do a cryptocurrencies. So I'm gonna use a broker that offers cryptocurrency, which is JFX. And it's gonna be the same if you did MetaTrader, MetaQuotes, so you just hit MetaQuotes, they'll bring up the same thing. So name, phone, email, don't worry about those. This is a demo account, it doesn't matter. You can make an unlimited amount of these. Account type, JFX, that's the only one it offers. It will usually ask you what currency you want to use. You want to use US dollar, euros, yen. But I'm in the United States, so I just need US dollar. Leverage, so leverage is how much money you can borrow from your broker. So if you have, let's say, a thousand dollar account and you have one of 500 leverage, that means you can borrow up to $500,000 from your broker. Or if you have one 100 leverage with thousand dollars that means you can borrow up to one hundred thousand dollars from your broker and this is one reason why you don't need much money to trade for it's because you can leverage what money you have with the banks now you have to be careful you can make more money you can lose more money you won't be in debt it'll just close you out and have zero dollar balance you have to worry about being in debt but it's better to gain slowly than to lose it all at once so i'm gonna do one 100 leverage that's the most i really recommend going the highest legal amount for the United States is one to 50. Um, so anyway, now for deposit size, I had to keep it realistic, especially if you're new to trading. I'd recommend, you know, a $5,000 account, $3,000 account, especially when you're realistically only be trading $100 and $300 in the beginning. So once that's all set up, we're gonna hit register right here. You can hit done. You don't really need to worry about the login or password because demo accounts are temporary. They actually eventually do get deleted. So. No point hanging on to it, you can make an unlimited amount of these. All right, so now we can see with quotes right here, we have different currency pairs and commodities that we can trade. Charts, this is where we can actually look at what's going on on the charts right here. Um, this is really kind of good, especially if you're on the road. Like I said, if let's say you're, no, you're away from the computer, you're just not, you, know, you didn't bring your laptop with you, you can still look at charts on your phone. I just think trading views a lot better. Here are the trades. So this is where you can see which active trades you have open. Right now we have nothing open, so it's not gonna show anything. History is gonna show that we have a $5,000 deposit. So if you win a trade, it'll show up here. If you lose a trade, it'll show up here. If you make a withdrawal, it'll show up right here. That's where you can check all that. Settings, this is where you can add more accounts. So if you're to actually make a live account, let's say with a WANDA or JFX or any other Forex broker that you trust, you can then connect that live account to this exact platform so that just like with this demo account, you can enter, exit, set up trades on the palm of your hands, on your computer, whether you're on, whether you know you're traveling, whether you're on the toilet, whether you're with friends, anywhere. And that's one beautiful thing about Forex. So let me show you how to enter in a trade. So since only cryptos are open right now, let's enter in a crypto trade. So let's look at cryptos. Let's do BTC USD, Bitcoin versus US dollar. Boom. All right, so that's right at the bottom right here. The way you enter trade is you just tap on the currency pair you want to trade. So we want to trade Bitcoin, so we tap on that. Now it's gonna say trade chart details. We want to trade, so I hit trade. I'll bring up this dialog box. So the first thing we're gonna see is right here, this is the lot size that we're gonna be trading. So one lot equals 100,000 units. So that doesn't mean you're buying one share, doesn't mean you're buying one stock or one Bitcoin. This means you're buying approximately 100,000 units. And if you're doing US dollars, that means it's gonna be approximately 100,000 US dollars. Not exact, because we're dealing with a lot of other currencies, commodities, and cryptos. That's just what it means. We wanna enter in just 10,000 units, we do 
0.01, that would be 10,000 units. If we saw 100,000 units, it'd be 0.01. Now that might sound like a lot, like wow, it's really the minimum I could do, just 1,000 units. Keep in mind that you're leveraging your money. So again, we're using one, one to 100 leverage, which means we have 100 times our equity to play with. So $1,000 really isn't that much. Anyway, so let's just say we just want to enter one micro. Now, the next thing we see right here is stop loss. So this is an, a tool you can use to limit your losses because Forex is here to make our lives easier. That's why I like to trade Forex. You can be able to set a trade, you're able to set and forget. If you have to keep staring at the charts, checking your phone, checking your laptop, checking everything, well, that defeats the purpose of Forex. So what stop loss is, it's, it says, hey, if price reaches, this particular level, I'll close out automatically to limit your losses. And take profit is the same thing. It's, hey, if price gets to this range, I'll automatically take the profit for you so you can keep on having fun. So you can be out and about, you know, with your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, doing whatever, all your friends, and you already have your trade set up with your stop loss and take profit. So whether it wins or loses, you're in the clear because you have this, this already set up. So I'm not doing a real trade right now, so I'm just gonna enter in just random stop loss. Let's just say, okay, that's the stop loss. Take profit again, it's not a real trade, so let's just say that this is the stop, the take profit. And when you're entering trades, you'll be able to come up with these, these entry points here on your own. In fact, I'll briefly go over how to do that in the next video. But let's just say this is the trade we wanna take. So the next thing we're gonna look at is do we wanna sell by market or buy by market? So sell means we want price to go down. If we have a hunch, if we have reason to believe that price can go down, and we want to profit off that downward movement, we hit sell by market. But let's say we think that price is going to go up. We want, we think price is going to go higher from where it currently is. We would hit buy by market. So that's how you can make money regardless of which way the market's going. The only requirement is that you you know which way it's gonna go, or you have a good guess of which way it's gonna go. So let's just hit buy by market, assume the price is gonna go up. Again, not telling you to buy Bitcoin right now, this is just, just purely for example. So we hit buy, boom, we went through, and now we can see where we are. So we're already down a dollar and 40 cents, that's because we have a spread. That's essentially how the broker makes money. We enter in a trade, you put a little behind, and that's okay, because if you have a good trading setup, a good strategy, you're gonna you're gonna go way past the, the the, the spread and you'll be in the clear. So we can actually look at a live chart. Whoops. So we can hold down on this trade, hit chart, and it'll show us a live chart of where we are. So we can actually see right here where our entry position is. So our entry position is way up here. Boom. And again, it's way up there because of the spread. That's just how the broker makes money. Our take profit is right above that. It's a weird take profit again because that's putting a random number, it usually be higher. And then this bottom line right here is the stop loss. So if price gets this low right here, it's gonna automatically close us out for a loss. But if price goes up to right here, they'll automatically close us out for a win and we make money. So again, that's just how that's just one way again, it makes it so much easier for us to make money off of Forex. So I'll go through one more example how to enter in a trade. Now let's do a say Ethereum. So let's look at cryptos. ETH USD Ethereum versus US dollars the plus sign. Add that. Now we tap icon right there. Hit trade. Now let's say we want to do five mini lots or half the standard. Let's just say we're actually gonna sell this one. So if we're gonna sell it, we want the stop loss to be higher than take profit. So we're gonna put in, you know, 215 take profits, put in 100. Again, this is just random numbers. I'm not suggesting you take this in any consideration for your financial decisions. This is purely for example. So let's say we think price is gonna go down from here. We're gonna hit sell by market. Boom, sell. So we're down $22. The reason why we're down more money on this one is because we entered in a higher lot size. So on Bitcoin, we only have one mini lot, or 0 0.01. On here, we have half a standard lot. 0.5 lots, so there's a lot more volume going on. We have a thousand units of volume on here, and here we have 50,000 units. So this one's about 50 times bigger. So we can again, check on the chart, our positions. So way up here is our stop loss, so that means if price goes way up here, we'll be closed out. If we zoom way out, well actually I don't think we can even zoom out that much. 
we just see our take profit way down there. So again, that's just how TradingView makes it, I mean, kind of trade form makes it so easy for us to enter in trades and protect ourselves. All right, so next I'm gonna briefly go over how to use TradingView. So this is TradingView's homepage. You can make a free account and I recommend you do because let's say you spend a couple hours one day marking up charts, doing analysis, writing down notes on it, and you wanna look at it the next day. If you have a free account, it'll save all your chart layouts so you don't have to keep redoing it. So that's one reason why I really recommend just making a free TradingView account. You can get premium. I'm not, uh, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I don't make money off this. This is just what I use. This is a website that's made me money looking at charts, so that's why I recommend it. I use Pro because I can use more indicators, have better time frames, so on and so on. But if you're brand new to Forex, I just recommend making a free account. It's worth it, you'll save a lot of time. So to get to the charts, we're gonna hit this button right here, it says charts, just click on that right there. And it's gonna bring up a random chart. Let's see, it's bring up the Euro versus the US dollar. Boom, perfect. So you might be thinking to yourself, what am I looking at? What, what am I getting myself into? It's actually pretty simple. So each one of these little lines or bars right here is called a candlestick, because it kind of looks like a candlestick. You have the body, the wax, then you have the wick on top, you also have the wick on bottom, so they're kind of like double-sided candlesticks. So that's where it gets its name. What they represent is price data. So they represent four things. They represent the low, the high, open, and close. So you don't have to really worry about that right now. I'm just trying to explain exactly visually what's going on. So each one of these candlesticks represents a time interval. And the way we check that is we look at right here. It says D which stands for daily, which means each one of these candlesticks represents one day of price data. If we're, let's say, go down to one hour, that now means every one of these candlesticks represents one hour of price data. Now, if we were to go down to a minute, we'd see it looks even crazier. Each one of these candlesticks represents one minute. So you might notice the lower you go, the crazier it gets, but the higher you go, the more kind of calm and predictable it gets. And that's because there's two ways of trading. You can be a swing trader, which means you, your trades last anywhere from two days to a week to a few weeks, or it can be a scalper where your trades last anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. So there's definitely two ways of going about it. Me personally, I'm a swing trader. That's why I've been teaching a lot of people. And a lot of my students I've seen have success in swing trading, it takes the stress out of it. But I do, I am friends with some scalpers who can make a quick thousand bucks in a day, which is fantastic. It's all about what you prefer, what you're looking for, what you're trying to get out of Forex. So I'm just going to go over a couple of things you can use to view, then we'll go on to the next video. So on this toolbar right here, you'll see a bunch of tools. The main thing I want to point out is that there's this arrow on most of these tools where there's more tools available. So if I say, hey, bust out a horizontal line, you can just go, okay, horizontal line's right here. You can place it, boom, like that. Or if I say, hey, place down a trend line, boom, you can place down a trend line just like that. Um, again, so these are where the tools are. You have all your Fibonacci tools right here. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. We'll get to it soon enough. Then you can also draw a brush, your paint. You can draw circles, you can draw rectangles. You can draw your patterns. Again, this probably sounds like gibberish right here, but this is just a lot of tools they have. Just know that the tools right here, you can click this arrow for more tools available. And to clear all this off there, you can hit the trash button right here. And the last thing I'm going to show you on TradingView is how to add indicators because in the next video I'm actually going to use a few indicators and show you how to use them for a very basic strategy. So indicators are right up here, just click it. Now there's a list of a bunch of different indicators. Some are built in by the company, some are actually made by users just like you and me because they are open source API. Anyone can ask for the APIs and make their own, make their own plugins, which is one reason why I really love TradingView. It's community driven. All right, so let's just say you want to add a moving average. So we search moving average, boom, click that, and now it's added. So here's our moving average. If you don't know what a moving average is, don't worry about it. You don't need to know what that is right now. I'm just showing you how you can edit your indicators and add or remove them. So we can change it by actually looking at the indicators listed on the upper left-hand corner right here. It says MA, which stands for moving averages. So we can hide it using this eyeball icon, and we can change the settings by hitting this this gear wheel. So we can change the color, we can change it to purple or pink, whatever color that is. We can make this line fatter. We can change this to a histogram, which could look a little crazy and does kind of defeat the purpose of it. But again, there's a lot of different customizations to do with it. 
we can hit OK. And we can even get rid of it in this X. And now we can even add oscillators, which I have a couple added. All you do is double tap to see if we have one. This is the RSI. Same thing, we can hide it. We can change the settings. We can change this to blue. We can make it fat. We can do a lot of other things. Or we can even just hit this X right here to get rid of it. And you add those the same way. You get indicators. Let's say you want to add MACD, which I'll talk about in the next video. You just add it like that and boom, it's right there. All right, so that's basically it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm gonna go over a very super, super basic strategy that you can use to start practicing, getting familiar with the Forex markets, entering your own trades. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.